Chicago Bears GM Ryan Poles had a press conference yesterday ahead of the NFL Combine, and we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about some things that came out in a Matt Eberflus interview, and then finally, we're going to look at 10 defensive linemen the Chicago Bears could take a look at in this draft combine, considering Jalen Carter isn't working out. We're going to talk about all this and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans. So, hey, welcome to Chicago Bears Central. I'm the host here, Hayes, holding her down for C-Dub and Bobby. And so we had a press conference from our GM yesterday, and there are a couple of key takeaways in that. First up that came out in that is that the, Bull, the Bears, sorry, the Bears may trade the number one pick before free agency now this is is could be interesting the first round pick i think the last three times that it was traded before um the draft they were only a couple days before the draft so if if the pick is traded as early as before free agency it does allow the bears to kind of focus more in on exactly what they need to target things like that but even though i will say that that even the fact that he's admitting that it could be traded they're pretty they pretty probably pretty well know exactly what uh what compensation they're going to get back and which package they're going to go for um, as far as trade offers. But he said this, a clear view of what we need. And there are some scenarios to add players as well, which gives us clarity for what we need to add in the draft. So basically saying that it just adds, it, it, it makes that picture a little bit clearer if they do trade the number one pick before free agency. So, you know, that could be something that we hear. And I already said and talked about the fact that, you know, down here at the draft combine, there's a lot of going to be a lot of execs, a lot of GMs, and those trade conversations are going to be talked about, not just with the Bears, but in general amongst other teams. And we could see kind of the framework set for a lot of those deals before they go back and officially accept them or not. Uh, so we also got from Ryan Poles that almost um, while he's not ruling out um, staying at number one, which, you know, is probably to drum up interest uh, that it does. He does seem like the. Uh, the ideal situation is for the Chicago Bears to draft back. So this is, again, something that we already know, right? If you've been paying attention to this team, we pretty much know that uh, the Bears are going to trade back. This is something that we've known. This is not news necessarily to us. But, you know, even uh, head coach Matt Eberflus, who came out and said that they will be uh, interviewing and meeting with the top quarterbacks in the draft as well. But do we expect them to draft them? No. It just, you know, it, you kind of got to do your due diligence. And at that point, uh, the commitment to Justin Fields spoke loud to me already saying before that he would have had to be blown away uh, by an offer to trade Justin Fields. Uh, but listen, they're committed to Justin Fields. You get that vibe. Every time this team talks, uh, Ryan Pohl saying that Justin Fields was in the draft room last year. He's going to be in it this year. He's going to be consulted with the draft. That does not sound like a quarterback who's on the trade block or who a franchise is not prepared to build completely around. So I don't really tend to believe that he's they, they won't or they're going to trade Justin Fields. And as we hear more from Ryan Poles and kind of their methodology, that just becomes louder and clearer, at least in my opinion. So they will do their homework, though, on the uh, on the class of quarterbacks that are coming in. Uh, they're going to look at them. They're going to interview them. As I said, they're going to take a detailed look at them just to make sure. And they should at this point. Um, but we also got a little bit more about the free agency mindset for uh, GM Ryan Poles. Uh, him saying this, take advantage now, but also not hurt you down the road. We don't want to waste this opportunity and do something that's not sound and doesn't allow us flexibility of years to come. So as I've been saying, like they're going to give some deals, but do not expect super long term deals, especially players that are older. And, you know, I, I have seen some comments and, and, and things like that, that, you know, the Bears may not be as active in free agency as some people think. No, I think the Bears are going to they're going to spread that money. They're going to sign a couple of the top free agent. They're going to get some prove it deals to some players that they may like, but want to see whether it be if they're coming back from injury or they just want to see how they fit in. But the Bears are going to be smart in the way that they go about their business in free agency, and I love that. I love it. And then uh, another thing that he said as far as in regards to defensive linemen, he says, what as far as what the Bears are looking for, violence, tenacity, and length. Um, so this is a position on the defensive line that we fully expect to be addressed in this offseason. And Ryan Poles just being the GM and, and having the defensive uh, philosophies of Matt Eberflus as well. They're going to do their due diligence on that on that defensive line, and they're going to they're going to draft somebody who they project and see to be a monster on that defensive line for years and years to come. Like I said, monsters of the midway. I need to see that back on my team. So you know, thoughts there. No, nothing came out about David Montgomery overall. It was kind of a punt of a press conference, if we're being honest. You have to kind of dig and weave through to kind of find the information, and and may, maybe it's pulling hair. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But at the end of the day, um. This this GM and they're playing things very close to the vest as they should, and in a very important um free uh, off season for the Chicago Bears. Now, 
Um, with that being said, yesterday we talked about the fact that Jalen Carter was not going to be in this upcoming uh, combine. He's not going to be doing the workout portion. So that, who else, uh, as far as defensive linemen, could the Bears be watching in this combine? Now, I've already done a video on the top defensive linemen in this draft, not named Jalen Carter or Will Anderson, but I want to talk about some players that the Bears could specifically be looking at, some three techniques, th things like that that they could look at. First one up, the uh, defensive lineman, Brian Breesey. Now, this is a player that I have covered on here before. Uh, I think he was on that defensive uh, lineman video that I did. I know me and Bobby have talked about him as well. This He's out of Clemson. This guy is a is a straight-up beast, a beast. Like, that. that's it. He was the number one overall high school player as well. He has great speed, great agility, especially for somebody who's already over 300 pounds. This dude is a monster. He could be somebody on that defensive line that you can get probably probably low first, low high second, um, maybe even mid to low, to low second, depending on if he falls. It's definitely a guy that the Chicago Bears could go after in addition to whatever they do early in their draft, especially if they get more draft picks around that second area as well. Uh, next one up, Zach. Pickens out of South Carolina. This guy is another monster. Uh, great for the interior defensive line, not really an edge. Um, so he has great hands, great uh, as far as lateral quickness. He has strength in his upper body. He's powerful. He moves, and uh, he, he draws attention on that defensive line. And again, these are kind of the moves that would come subsequent after adding another defensive uh, play, uh, player on that line, maybe Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. Another one, uh, Jacqueline Roy out of LSU. Listen. You talk about power, 6'3", 302 pounds. Uh, he's not going to uh, do the 40-yard dash because he does have a hamstring injury, but he is going to take part of the defensive tackle portion of the NFL Combine. So this is another player that the Bears could look at if they want to try to get some talent and some value later on in that draft. Next up, uh, Jervon Dexter, a defensive lineman out of, out of Florida, 6'6", hugely athletic player. Very strong, um, and impression, uh, impressive getting off the line pretty quickly. Uh, he, he has long strides as well. He uh, it, And we'll see. The biggest thing with him is they want to see how he's going to run that 40-yard dash. If he runs a sub 4-8, it could definitely help him in a lot of areas there. Um, so that's another one up. Uh, next one, of course, as we all know, Miles Murphy. This is another one out of Clemson. This guy is probably going to be – he's not going to be there for the Bears as a second defensive lineman pick. This is going to be have to be one of the first defensive linemen that you pick um, it, unless you get two top five picks because Miles Murphy is definitely going to go high, I think, in that first round. Six, uh, six foot five, 275 pounds, explosive off the ball, really good player there. And then lastly, Edge B.J. Or Jalari, uh, another one, LS, LSU. He's an edge, though. Uh, can play in the in the three four. Uh, the, you know, he he's he can play in the four three as well. Um, but he's more interested in playing in the three four. So again, this would be more of a a skill pick than a perfect scheme fit for the Chicago Bears. But another player that the Bears absolutely could take a look at in this in this draft combine. We're in an interesting place for the Chicago Bears right now, guys. It's going to um, we're, we're in a place in the offseason where kind of all things are waiting on that first domino to move. And if the Bears do end up trading that first overall pick before free agency, do not be expected if you see a lot of subsequent deals, not necessarily for the Bears, but for the NFL overall. A lot of things are, are um, a lot of things are hanging on what the Bears can and, and will do um, in this in this upcoming offseason, both in the draft, both in free agency. They have some of the, the, the most money um, as well. Uh, as as that number one draft pick, they're not some. They have the most money in in free agency. So everything goes through Chicago this offseason. The Chicago Bears, in many ways, control the offseason, As I've said before, so we'll see what they uh, what they can do in this one, man. There's a lot of uh, picks that the that the Bears can look at, especially in this draft combine, who uh, could see their stock go up. Um, they're big, like, and so just looking in this, I think that the Bears are going to walk away between free agency. And uh, the draft with a lot of new starters, uh, not a lot of new young talent, and a lot of players that could shape the future of what's to come for the Chicago Bears in all ways. And so, as Ryan Pose, the, Ryan Pose is not in, a, like I said, an MVP position at all. This is not something that that Pose can come in and just be like, "Hey, we got this because we're the Bears and we got the most money." If he plays this card right, and you know, it seems like his mindset is on that: spend the money the right way. Don't just give money just to give money. Make sure you keep your money, your, your eyes on also what's going to harpen you in the future. If the Bears walk away with with completing these things and not setting themselves up bad for or in a bad place to add free agents later on in the future as well, it's going to be a fun offseason for the Chicago Bears. And we're going to cover it all right here 
at Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bears Central, gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave us a text message and our voicemail for our mailback episodes on Fridays, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.